Okay, finally, uh, we are back. I have just been crazy busy and I also had live with roommates and uh, uh, they've just been not giving me a chance to record quietly until now. And even now I only have a few minutes, so I'm gonna try and do this really quickly. Um, so you should be able to see here somewhere uh, this picture. This is the 486 and it's running Windows 95. Check that out, cool, huh? Um, so. One of the reasons why this computer is running Windows 95 is because of the printer that you see right here, and I have an upcoming video on this. It's just a printer. I don't expect it to be a long video, but um, dot matrix printers are a, they, they hold a special place in my heart. I figure some people probably find them horrendously annoying, but uh, I love how they sound, but I'm, a, I'm weird. I also like how floppy disks sound and things like that, but you're watching this, so you probably like that stuff and you're weird too. So welcome to the club. Anyways, um, so yeah, this 46 with 32 megs of RAM uh, and eight gigs of storage, which is more than any 46 should have, um, is running Windows 95 and it actually runs it really super well. Um, I am gonna get back to some benchmarks because I've learned some things. Uh, big shout out to the um, uh, folks that uh, helped me out in the last video. If you go look at their super helpful comments in the last video, um, uh, really appreciate it. So basically what I have been able to determine is that this motherboard does not officially seem to support the 486 with 16K of L1 cache, but it does work. Um, but <laughs> uh, the turbo function no longer works. So whatever, it's stable. Uh, the other thing that I did is um, I had the weight state um, set to over 33 megahertz instead of 33 megahertz or faster. And uh, uh, that was causing the system to be unstable. So since I've changed that weight state back, I've had no hard locks, no problems at all. So yay. Um, anyway, so right, why run Windows 95? Well, like I was saying, this Oki data printer here uh, is the main reason. And it just so happens that I have a copy of Office 95. Bam, look at that. Starts up reasonably quickly. I can type stuff. And uh, it just so happens I have sort of a pen pal um, uh, north of me in um, Oregon. Uh, he's super into typewriters and I'm super into computers with printers attached to them. So hey, digital typewriter, right? Um, I actually have a typewriter video coming up. It's one of my uh, restoration videos and uh, I'm excited to do that I think what I'm gonna have to do is take the keyboard mechanism apart on that thing it's a it's a uh, oh shoot I think it's a Canon I think it's a Canon digital word processor thing it actually has this weird hybrid thermal ribbon slash it can print directly to thermal paper without a ribbon it's a neat thing I didn't know they existed so anyway that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have Windows 95 on this system and also Windows 95 is just interesting um, it uh, lives on top of DOS as best I can tell. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, uh, as a result, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get a Windows UI, but you also get a, um, you get DOS. And uh, those are kind of, to me, the golden age of, of PCs is sort of DOS, Windows 95, Windows 98, and to some degree, Windows XP. <clears throat> So um, anyway, right now I'm running the uh, monitor at 640 by 480. Um, the video card I have upgraded to a Cirrus Logic. Where is it? Here it is. Here it is. Well, it's just a Cirrus Logic. Uh, I forget the exact model number, but um, I had the Trident TGUI 9440 in here, and it was fine. Um, but honestly, this Cirrus Logic card is way faster. Uh, I picked this card up for $10 at the uh, Vintage Computer Festival West, along with some other VLB card that I don't really know too much about. Uh, probably have to stick it in here at some point and fiddle with it. But um, anyway, so that's kind of what's been done with this system so far. Oh yeah, this has a network card in it. But um, and this was installed by the um, by the OS. Um, this the card was just baked in uh, the driver, I should say. So that's really cool. Uh, the sound uh, card is also now an AWE64 PNP, um, and it sounds wonderful. Quick demo here. Uh, 
and you'll do. Anyway, I love Wavetable. Wavetable is like one of my favorite things about old computers. I mean, look at that bit. Look at that blitting. Isn't that nice? <laughs> it's so good. It's, it, it's a tarry mess, but it's smooth. I love it. Uh, and this is running at, like I said, 640 by 40 right now. There's no way for me to change the refresh rate. Um, but if I change the resolution, the refresh rate changes. And now it's running at 60 hertz. Um, I recently watched, it's actually 59.9. Uh, frames per second. I recently watched um, uh, Clint or LGR's uh, video on shooting CRTs and uh, my camera is not pro gear. It is a 4K Sony camcorder basically. Um, I'm amazed it even has a shutter speed setting. So um, looking at the video that the camera's recording, you are seeing a bar go along. Uh, if I can get it at exactly 60 hertz for however, whatever reason, um, it looks like solid. It looks like you're filming like a modern LCD. Uh, which is kind of amazing filming. Uh, who still films anymore? Uh, one other quick thing before we switch over to DOS uh, for a quick game demo and um, uh, and the benchmark. Ready? Ready? And uh, I love this. This is 90s AF. I, I love this. Um, it, it just it's just such a hilarious thing. Um, one other good one that's in here, and I can only play it for a second because I don't want to get a copyright strike. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's just a super neat song. Um, I have this on CD somewhere. Uh, I forget who makes this. Robert Miles? No, it doesn't sound right. It, correct me in the comments if, if you remember. But um, yeah, so uh, finding a copy of Mod for Win was awesome. And uh, a question for the comment section. Um, if you're interested in setting this up, because I'm going to show you what I did to the DOS side of this. Uh, if you want to see how to do this, uh, let me know, and I'll do like kind of a walkthrough on how I set all this up. So, um, let's go ahead and quit out of this. No, I don't want to save. And let's restart in MS DOS mode. So as you can see, the mouse driver loads, uh, the plug and play thingamabob loads, um, and then I have a set blaster uh, in there, and then the AWE utility fires up, and we're pretty good. And uh, you know, Mem still looks okay. It's it's not as good as the new XT that's using like 12k of conventional memory or something crazy like that, but it's plenty. And on you know, for everything that's running in like uh, um, protected mode and all that stuff, it's it's totally fine. So let's fire up some Descent, which, as you may or may not know, that's my favorite game um, of all time. So. This also has the best music, in my opinion, of just about any game uh, from this time. Enhanced with AWE, of course. Or advanced wave effects. Uh, the music in 3 is pretty good, um, but uh, 2 is probably one of my favorite in this. Um, I have this game set up right now so the music's a bit louder than the effects just because I like the music in this game so much. Um, and this is running a lot better. Uh, in pure DOS uh, it runs 
uh, pretty great. Um, I would say that most of the time this is close to 30. <laughs> Yeah, so like, running pretty good, I think. No surprise. Ugh. Yeah, this is definitely how I was playing it back in the day. All right, we don't want to get shot, so we're going to escape in here for a sec and come back out. There's some baddies in here. Whoa. But yeah, running okay. Running pretty okay. Oh, dang it. <laughs> All right, well, let's just grab this. Punch a little harder. Make these robots pay. Oh, no. <laughs> I ever mention how much I hate my laugh? Why am I telling YouTube this? Well, if you can't confide in YouTube, who can you confide in, right? Um, I also want to mention that, like, everybody in the comments has been so amazingly supportive um, from uh, help from the 486 video to just really thoughtful comments and, and uh, people letting me know that they subscribed. Like, that just means so much to me. Um, very much appreciated. You know, I think that the retro hardware community is a pretty amazing one. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, we all share a common... Uh, <laughs> I almost want to say lust, <laughs> addiction, affection, affliction, <laughs> where's my thesaurus, uh, for, you know, keeping these computers alive. And, uh, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, why don't you just play this in an emulator or something like that? And it's like, yeah, that's fine. And, you know, you can play something like um, uh, Descent uh, Rebirth, Re Relive, something like that. Rebirth, I think it is. And uh, you can play this, and it looks better, and it plays better, and it's, an, and it's a totally enjoyable, perfectly great way to play uh, this game. But, uh, I already came in here today. But, um, you know, there's just something really special about running it on period hardware. I, I just love that. Keeping these machines running, doing maintenance, you know, maybe not the, the most fun spots, but, you know, I just think it's, uh, I think it's just something kind of special, interesting. It, and, you know, I don't judge, I, you know, if whether you're into PCs or classic Macs or handhelds or whatever, I'm not really paying attention to where I'm going. Um, you know, I think it's great, it's really great to be passionate about, um, you know, the electronics that got us to where we are today. You know, just, I think that's what's really important. You know, not to forget, kind of, forget our roots, so to speak. Oh, did I get the blue key card? Yeah, I guess I did, didn't I? Oh, no! So... Anyway, I just wanted to play a little bit of Descent, uh, show you how this DX4 is running. It is definitely a marked improvement uh, from Descent 1 with 8K of cash uh, to 16K of cash. Um, and, uh, and then of course, um, going from no level two cash to 256K of level two cash. And that probably made a much bigger difference. Um, and then uh, going to the Cirrus Logic over the Trident. I feel like that, again, added just a just a teeny, teeny bit more, like an extra few frames, you know, even just a few percentage points when you're kind of at the ragged edge of, of 60 or 30 frames a second or getting close to it, really makes a big difference on a system like this, so. Um, yeah, so that all works great. So we are going to quit out of the best game ever. All right, and now we need to boot into 
plain Jane DOS and uh, uh, because I want to run Sysmark on this system and uh, um, that will show something. So I went back and I watched Phil's Computer Labs or Phil of Phil's Computer Labs video um, on uh, the f I f DX266 build that he did, I want to say it was, and he ran Sysmark and he made a really interesting observation, which I'm going to show you here. So let's reboot. I love this sound. Just a, just a great little nugget, like just the louder the drive, the better, in my opinion, within reason. I mean, if it's like so loud that it's driving you crazy, then that's another thing, but. All right, so let's go to DOS Bench, DOS Bench. All right, and we're gonna run SpeedSys. So this is really interesting. Uh, this takes a while to get started, so um, basically, and, I'm, and Phil may be wrong, you know, nobody's perfect, but uh, uh, Phil made the observation that uh, when it comes to do the memory benchmark, which it will do here shortly, uh, what it basically does is it, uh, uh, after it's done testing the extended memory here, uh, you'll see it count up to 16K, like really fast, and then drop off really sharply, sharply because that SRAM is super duper fast. Or sorry, not SRAM, uh, the cache um, that's uh, inside the processor is like super duper fast. Um, and then it will kind of stay down here low on the screen and it'll move along until it reaches 256K and then it will slow down a little more because that SRAM, I guess, is still a little bit faster or at least bench is a little bit faster than system memory. Uh, I'm not a, you know, I'm an enthusiast. I'm not a computer architect, so to speak. So yeah, you can see it here, boom, 16K drops way down. And then as it's coming along here, 64K. And then once it hits 256, it basically switches to system memory, and you can see it then goes down a little bit more. Um, I think this system has a 72 pin. It has one 72 pin SIM, which I think is EDO. Uh, I may be wrong on that one. Anyway, so that was the read test. Now it's doing the write test, which for whatever reason is the same speed all the way across. And we'll fast forward. All right, we're back and now we're doing the moving test. Uh, I'm assuming it's doing some kind of read-write uh, combo or something like that. And you can see that was really fast in level one. Um, and then as it approaches 256K for level two, it will slow down again. And do slows down quite a bit more. Um, so this is really interesting, right? Because it's much, much slower on system memory for doing this moving test, but it's way faster uh, in the L1 cache. So I think a lot of it really just depends on how the cache is utilized, right? And, and that has everything to do with how fast a program will run based on how it's utilizing your system's resources. So if somehow it's written in such a way that, um, uh, you know, is able to take advantage of that level one cache, then you'll see a big improvement going from eight to 16, or it might be one that maybe doesn't take very good advantage of level one cache, but it takes really good advantage of level two cache. And so by adding that level two cache, um, you get uh, a big improvement there. Or it may be written in such a way that the cache doesn't really matter at all. Um, so this is kind of a hilarious test. Uh, this test takes forever. Um, so I'll probably just fast forward through it here, but, um, you can see that the random access time is less than one millisecond, which is pretty great. And uh, uh, buffered read, uh, 1.3 megabytes a second. Linear verify speed, uh, roughly 95 megabytes a second. Um, so yeah, that eight, that cheapo eight gig SanDisk SD card that's on the SD to IDE adapter in there is plenty fast. <laughs> you can see right there where it's like, uh, you know, how fast is this drive? And it basically just mac it, it pegs the meter. It's faster than everything. So 
pretty awesome. And, and this is not a test for just 486s, right? If you look, you can see it goes all the way up to like a Celeron 500, which is kind of an infamous processor, Athlon 600, K62 500. So um, yeah, plenty, plenty fast enough for at least this system. Um, oh, and then up here in the upper left-hand corner, right up here, you can see it says AMD AM486 DX4 WB. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing that means right back. Tell me if I'm wrong, tell me if I'm right, 100 megahertz. So the CPU is definitely, I think, being properly identified, at least by Sysmark. Oh yeah, and there you can see it, the Cirrus Logic GD54XX VGA with one megabyte of RAM. And um, yeah, you can even see the floppy drive uh, controller. I mean, I guess it has to identify itself as IDE, so. Um, Anyway, uh, this I have been recording for about 20 minutes now, and uh, I want to try and keep this one really short. So cutting room floor, hopefully this will be 10, 15 minutes long. Um, really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, the 46 is absolutely running like a champ. It's a little bit of a bummer that the, um, uh, the turbo uh, doesn't work. In other words, I can't turn the turbo off um, and run it at like a you know sub 386 speeds or something like that. So 286 speeds somewhere in there. But, um, but otherwise, I'm really happy with how the system runs. Um, it's, uh, it's perfect for my needs. Uh, that's certainly for sure. So uh, I'll, uh, hopefully I'll hear from you guys in the, in, and gals in the comments. And um, thanks again for watching. Uh, please uh, like this video if you do. It helps the channel grow. And um, yeah, and just a big thanks to, again, to everybody that commented in the last video. Uh, including a few people that were like, hey, great video, you got a new subscriber, thanks. Like, that just, it makes my day. So thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, upcoming build, uh, I have a uh, case, or I have a, um, <clears throat> I think I might've mentioned this already, I have a um, Pentium 233MMX. It's gonna have a Sound Blaster AWE64 Gold, uh, which hopefully it works. A friend of mine gave it to me is giving it to me. I'm gonna go pick it up next weekend. Um, it currently has an S3 Verge DX in it and that thing is just awful. Um, so I picked up a couple of ATI Mach 64s, um, which I think will support Windows 95 really well. This system's gonna run Windows 95 also. Um, I've been testing this system just kinda on a box uh, outside of a case. I have a case set aside. I've got uh, new old stock power supply set aside for it. Um, I'm just waiting to get the last couple little bits. I also have some 3D printed parts. Um, and uh, uh, at some point I wanna do a video on uh, 3D printing for retro. Um, I've got a couple of different things to show off for that, including in that video. So uh, that's kind of what I got coming up and some other things. So, um, so again, sorry this one's late. I just really didn't have an opportunity to record it. And I've also just been really busy with work and personal life and stuff like that. So. Um, all right, I think I've said goodbye long enough. Thanks again. Um, smash that like button. <laughs> I feel dirty just saying that. But if you do like it, please give the video a thumbs up, uh, share it and all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll keep this train rolling. Thanks again and keep it 90s. <laughs>